welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to talk about a microprocessor architecture called Big Little. This refers to CPUs with two types of processor core, some larger and more powerful and designed for intensive processing activities, and some smaller and more energy efficient and designed for less demanding processing tasks. Right now, Big Little is in the news because Intel has just launched its latest Alder Lake microprocessors, which use a Big Little configuration. However, Big Little has been a feature of many smartphone and tablet processors for some time, and Apple's M1 chips also have a Big Little architecture. There are also now rumors that AMD's Zen 5 CPUs will in the future also have a Big Little configuration. And so it seems pretty certain now that Big Little is here to stay. And so in this video, I'm going to examine how and why we got here, why do we have Big Little, what are all the major players doing, and what may be the implications. The first ever microprocessor, the Intel 404, was released in 1971. Subsequent CPUs were more and more powerful because they were increasingly sophisticated and had higher clock speeds. However, for 30 years, all microprocessors had just one core to execute their logical and mathematical operations. In 2001, IBM introduced the Power 4 as the world's first multi-core processor. In 2005, both Intel and AMD also launched multi-core CPUs called the Pentium D and the Athlon X64X2. All three of these chips were dual core, so allowing them to execute two different processing tasks at the same time. And today, almost all CPUs have at least two cores, with some server processors containing a staggering 56 individual processing units. Back at the start of the millennium, two key factors drove the introduction of multi-core processors. Firstly, advances in nanolithography allowed transistors and other components to be manufactured on a smaller and smaller scale, so making it possible to include more than one core on a single chip. Secondly, it became very difficult to increase microprocessor speeds without producing damaging levels of heat. For many years, major increases in clock speed were therefore largely set aside in favour of producing CPUs with multiple cores, as this allowed them to deliver higher performance by executing multiple parallel processing operations. Over the last couple of decades, microprocessor designers have been tasked not just with increasing performance, but also with producing CPUs that use as little energy as possible. This has obviously been critical for mobile devices to increase battery life. But reducing energy use is also important for desktop PCs and servers in order to reduce heat and to respond to environmental concerns and the rising cost of electricity. One method adopted to reduce energy use has been to run a CPU's cores at a lower speed when idle or when executing less intensive activities. This approach was first implemented in mobile processors, but is now also widespread in desktop and server CPUs. So today, most CPUs have a base clock speed, as well as a turbo or boost speed, and will also run far slower than their base speed when there is very little processing to perform. So, for example, if we monitor the clock speed on this computer with an Intel i7-6700T CPU, we can see that it drops to as low as 802 MHz, even though the CPU's base speed is 2.8 GHz and its maximum turbo boost is 3.6. Lowering clock speed is an effective means of reducing energy consumption and heat generation when a CPU has a minimal workload. However, in October 2011, ARM took things to the next level when it announced a new heterogeneous architecture called Big Little. ARM designs most of the processors found in smartphones and tablets and details Big Little on this webpage that I'll provide a link to in the video description along with many other references. Back in 2013, ARM also published this excellent white paper that explains how the development and design of mobile processors is guided by two factors. These are, at the high performance end, high compute capability but within thermal bounds, 
and at the low performance end a need for very low power consumption. ARM's Big Little technology rose to these requirements by using two types of CPU core, which it refers to as individual processors. As ARM further explains, little processors are designed for maximum power efficiency, while big processors are designed to provide maximum compute performance. Both types of processors are coherent and share the same instruction set architecture. Using Big Little technology, each task can be dynamically allocated to a big or little core, depending on the instantaneous performance requirement of that task. Today, processors designed by ARM are not only used in smartphones and tablets. For a start, as regular viewers of Explaining Computers will know, they're also found in many single board computers, some of which feature an ARM system on a chip with a big little architecture. For example, several current single board computers are based on an RK3399, which has two A72 big cores and four A53 little cores. In March 2017, ARM announced its dynamic technology as the next advance in Big Little. The first generation of the technology was limited to two clusters of up to four identical Big or Little cores, all clocked at the same speed. But dynamic allows a system on a chip to have single clusters that contain up to eight Big or Little cores, and for each core to be clocked at a different speed. Beyond the world of tablets, smartphones and single board computers, processors based on ARM technology are now also being used in some desktop PCs and laptops. Not least, in June 2020, Apple announced that its next generation of computers will be based on a new family of its own ARM chips, rather than x86 processors from Intel. The first new Apple ARM chip is called the M1 and started to be shipped to new computers in late 2020. In October 2021, Apple announced two further M1 chips, the M1 Pro and the M1 Max, initially to be used in its MacBook Pro laptops. All M1 chips have a big little architecture. Specifically, the M1 has four big cores called Firestorm for high performance processing tasks, together with four little cores called Ice Storm for when more menial processing is required. Meanwhile, the M1 Pro comes with either six or eight big Firestorm cores and two little Ice Storm cores. Finally, the M1 Max also has eight big cores and two little cores, as well as many other differences beyond the scope of this video to explore. In October 2021, Intel launched the 12th generation of its core processor family, codenamed Alder Lake. This features what Intel terms performance or P cores and efficient or E cores in what Intel described as their new performance hybrid architecture. Given that the term Big Little is trademarked by ARM, it's no surprise that Intel doesn't refer to Big Little. But this is merely a matter of linguistics, as Intel's new chips allocate processing across either performance or efficient cores as workloads dictate. To achieve this, a technology called Intel Thread Director is used to allocate the right processing task to the right type of core at the right point in time. So far, six Alder Lake processors have been released. These include the i5-12600K, which has six performance cores and four efficient cores, the i7-12700K, which has eight performance cores and four efficient cores, and the i9-12900K, which has eight performance cores and eight efficient cores. All of this inevitably makes CPU specifications more complex, as they now have to list a total number of cores, a total for each core type, as well as the maximum turbo and base frequencies for each core category. And for some processors, like the i9-12900K we're looking at here, we also have listed a slightly higher Intel Turbo Boost Max Technology 3.0 frequency, which indicates how fast the processor's best performing core or cores may be clocked in turbo mode. 
Intel claims that their performance hybrid architecture delivers significant performance improvements, enabling up to two times faster content creation compared to their 11th generation processors. This point noted some gamers who were early adopters of Alder Lake did experience difficulties. The issue was that the DRM software used to protect some games identified a PC's performance cores and efficient cores as two separate computers, which prevented the program from loading or caused it to crash. At the time of making this video, the issue has been fixed for all titles aside from Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Fernbus Simulator and Madden FFL 22. However, the issue highlights how problems may arise following such a fundamental change to Intel's processor architecture. And indeed, in addition to the gaming issue, already fixes to the latest Linux kernel have also been required so it can deal most effectively with Alder Lake's performance and efficient cores. The big little CPU revolution is now advancing rapidly, with ARM, Apple and Intel all being major players. There are also rumours that AMD will have some type of big little architecture in its future Ryzen 8000 CPUs based on its forthcoming Zen 5 architecture. Now, I do have to stress that right now, anything to do with AMD and Big Little is just rumour. There have been some reports, but they haven't been substantiated by the company. And we haven't yet got the uh, Zen 4 architecture on the market, let alone the Zen 5. But it will, to me at least, be very surprising if AMD don't follow ARM and Apple and Intel with some type of a Big Little configuration in their future CPUs. Looking further ahead, I suspect that in the future we're going to see systems on a chip with an increasing diversity of processor cores. Already we have chips that include not just big little conventional CPU cores, but also a number of GPU cores for graphics processing and a neural engine or NPU to run machine learning algorithms. And dedicated cores for vision processing or VPUs are also a distinct near-term possibility. Looking even further ahead, in the 2030s we may even have highly diverse processors that feature quantum cores for executing complex optimizations. As I've discussed in my quantum computing updates, already Xanadu, Intel and others are developing silicon-based quantum processors. So the idea of a future system on a chip with big and little CPU cores, GPU cores, an NPU, a VPU and a QPU is not as outlandish as it may sound. Back in the present, the greatest challenge for hardware engineers and for software programmers is to ensure we get the greatest benefits from CPUs with a big little architecture and we don't get the sort of problems arising as we've seen with Intel's Alder Lake chips and not being able to run certain games, at least initially, on those processors. And for and users like ourselves, I think the big issue that comes out of Big Little will be we'll have to be increasingly careful in terms of how we appraise, how we assess different processors and computers when we're making purchase decisions, things like that. Because it'll no longer be possible just to look at a computer, to look at a processor, and to judge it based upon its processor speed or even the number of cores. We'll have to start thinking about the type of cores in a particular CPU. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon. Hey.